G-protein is composed of three subunits that are known as alpha, beta and gamma. The alpha subunit is around 44 kilodaltons. The beta and gamma subunit form a dimer that is roughly the same mass as the alpha. This dimer can only be dissociated by denaturation. When we first see the G-protein, it is connected to the third cytoplasmic loop of the transmembrane receptor. At this stage, the G-protein has a GDP molecule bound to its alpha subunit and is inactive. The binding of a ligand to the receptor results in a number of conformational changes. The third loop of the receptor is the first to undergo this. This results in the alpha subunit losing its affinity to GDP and causing internal structural changes that result in the loss of the GDP molecule. Because of the increased concentration of GTP to GDP in the cell, the GTP molecule binds to the alpha subunit which causes more conformational changes. The end result is that the alpha and beta gamma dimer split up and travel towards their respective effectors. In this case, the alpha subunit's effector is shown as adenylate cyclase. The alpha subunit binds to the effector which causes a cascade effect in the cell. Chemical signals, second messengers, activate other proteins within the cell. The effector also activates GTPase activity in the alpha subunit. GTP is hydrolyzed to GDP and the alpha subunit resumes the state that we first found it in. The end result is that the alpha subunit and the beta gamma dimer reform to create the resting G protein, awaiting another activated receptor to set it off on its journey. Although here the coupling is shown as perfect, Occasionally a G-alpha subunit is not available to transmit the signal.